Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is David Hanlon, AKA the Laptop Legend, and today, day trading, I only made 1,700 something dollars because uh, I screwed up a lot of really good plays, and there are a lot of really good plays in this market. We had an OTC runner that went up over a thousand percent today. And uh, seriously, thanks to WSRC, it feels like we're getting an a thousand percent runner every single day in OTC land. So you guys don't wanna miss these. And uh, we also had a really, really nice recovery from a former runner based on some news that came out and it's probably gonna keep running into tomorrow. So you guys definitely wanna be keeping an eye on that one at open. So I'm making this video kind of as a recap for today as well as a, uh, you know, I guess to, to let you guys know what stocks you need to be watching tomorrow. So please remember to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's dive into my computer to talk about these charts. All right guys, so I'm here at my laptop and this is the chart for REPO, the most insane runner today. This was our 1000% OTC runner today and you can see it ran from, I don't even know what it started at, I mean, three point something cents and it ran as high as 44 cents. So well over a thousand percent at the peak and it closed up 906% on the day. Pretty insane chart. If I go look at the daily, you can see, I mean, this just came out of nowhere. This stock barely traded any volume, anything, anything before. Uh, I mean, it's just insane. It's insane. That's that's all I have to say about, uh, I mean, what this chart looks like, guys. But the reason for it supposedly was some type of merger or something, and supposedly they already have some product working. Honestly, I don't know why it's spiking up this much uh, because, you know, I, I think any type of 900% move is, is pretty unjustified usually in one day. Um, so maybe this gets some continuation tomorrow, guys. I'm definitely going to be watching it because, you know, I feel like kind of worst case scenario, it's very low volume and open, it just fades off and then it finds a base somewhere and uh, you know, maybe it bounces off a of 10 and runs to 20 or something, that's 100% bounce. So potentially that's what's gonna happen. If it keeps getting more volume tomorrow, this thing could break 44 and keep running for all I know. Uh, we had a chart that did that the other day on Friday that it, it basically, it had a day where it ran a lot like this, like a thousand percent, then it had like a cool off day and then it ran even further the next day. I don't know if it was E, was it EGDD? Was it this one? Yeah, I think this is the chart. So you can see it ran a lot, kind of had a cool off day and then ran even more. So uh, I'm not sure, I'm really not sure what it's gonna do, man, but uh, you gotta be watching this one, guys. You gotta be watching this because it has a lot of uh, a lot of room to run. So that's, that's pretty much it for that one. WSRC, guys, again, such an insane chart that it had a big comeback like that. And uh, it's honestly been been pretty choppy. It closed red on the day. Looks like it gapped up a decent amount. Unless I'm tripping. Yeah, I think it gapped up and then uh, ended up coming back down. And had a pretty weak day overall, but did have some nice dip buys in there. The main play on this one was when they tweeted from their official Twitter account that they have some exciting news coming, I, th I think, this week or next week. And uh, I alerted that in the Discord. I bought it as soon as they tweeted that. Unfortunately, I didn't buy huge size. Uh, I ended up buying 30,000 shares at like 21.3 or 21.5. I sold 10,000 at 21.9 and then... I saw that it was gonna keep ripping, so I rebought some more and sold some up here, made like 500 on that or something like that. So uh, pretty nice trade overall, but could have held a little bit longer. I think I sold too early. And you know, it's, it's guys, these tickers are always in plays, man. They're always in play. If, if, you, if you get the news right, if you get in right after some breaking news comes out, typically speaking, they're pretty nice. Uh, one exception to that was DPLS. This one was very, choppy today very annoying um some news came out right here i ended up buying it uh like seven two five uh right here it spiked up a tiny bit and then it started tanking so unfortunately that market sold tried to cancel some but ended up filling some like down here 715 luckily i didn't get filled at 705 i tried to buy there couldn't uh and then by the time it was already spiking it was too late to buy here you couldn't get filled so very annoying stock because I had 300,000 shares, man. So I could have made a lot if I had just held up to there. But you never know. You know, you get stocks like, like ABVH where uh, the news comes out, they spike up, they pull back a little bit, and instead of running again through those highs, they just completely dump and lose 50%. So because of that, you know, I'm a little sketched out holding a stock that 
barely spikes on breaking news and then just tanks. So I would rather take a you know, 150, 200, $300 loss than take a $5,000 loss because I don't want to cut my losses. So because of that, you know, I'm a little trigger trigger shy, but I think it's it's gonna pr protect me in the long run, I would say. So that is uh, that's kind of the play on that one. The, the, the stack that I really wanted to point out to you guys, and if you're in the Discord again, you already know about this, but was GGII. And this one, it's just, it's unfortunate how it ended up playing out because I decided to swing it on this day right here from 104, I had 300,000 shares. I ended up cutting them at like 88 uh, the next day because George Sharp tweeted overnight, which made this thing gap down. You can see this big gap down. I ended up cutting them right here. Uh, and then it ended up bouncing, consolidated, found another base. Uh, and then it started spiking up. And then it came back down, but it consolidated again at the 0.9 area. And to me, this is a pretty good sign, you know, that you want to probably consider long it again because, you know, still looking at this chart, Guys, it's so beaten down from this area, you know, 0.9. It's still really beaten down. And with that great consolidation, uh, pretty just pretty, pretty epic swing trade, in my opinion. You know, I wish I had waited one more day to, uh, to swing this thing because I think if I had waited and had been trying to swing it from here, I definitely would have held uh, at least some. You know, maybe I would have sold some into that pop. Um, but I, I probably would have been, been able to rebuy there, but because I bought here and ended up cutting here, I didn't want to rebuy here. So I ended up just butchering this whole trade. Uh, but these are some really, really good swing setups in OTC land that if you nail them, you can make really, really good returns, uh, very quickly guys. And it's, it's mainly about finding former runners that have some basing action. And that's kind of the main thing here. So you can see this thing, this thing went explosively high guys. This thing went crazy supernova from, you know, sub penny all the way up to 17 cents almost. And it came all the way back down to sub penny land. And because of that, you know, when it starts going sideways, all it takes is a little bit of buying and this thing starts spiking because it's already sold off so much that like there's only so low you can go without bouncing a little bit. Now, long term, this thing could definitely go lower than here, but you, nothing goes straight down typically the same way that nothing goes straight up typically. Uh, so you're never going to find a stock that, that goes from zero to a million and comes right back down and doesn't at least try to bounce a little bit unless it's just complete manipulation. Um, but you know, th this is just an example of one of those stocks that it's nice to swing. Another one is SNPW guys. And this is one that I swung from here. You can see, I mean, it had a beautiful run all the way up here and then consolidated really nicely. I bought some here at 2.8, ended up selling at like 3.3 three or something like that. And then I didn't hold it in the next day when it spiked really big. Well, it actually came back down, found another base and I forgot to buy it again. And uh, it had another really nice green day today. So we'll see if it gets some continuation tomorrow, maybe breaks above this level here. If so, could definitely see a nice little run because you know, this is a former supernova as well. I mean, just the fact that so many stocks ran in January and February in the OTC market is pretty insane, guys. I mean, there's so many of these charts, but if you guys know of any other charts that are similar to this one, uh, definitely put them down in the comment section below because uh, I think it's I think it's it's going to be a great opportunity to get in, have pretty low risk, um, and you know, see if you can get a, a nice little pop up, make 20%, make 50%. So it can very easily happen in OTC land. Another stock that's similar is GTEH. You can see this one likes to pop up and uh, it's now basing a little bit. So I'll see uh, what happens. I'm a little concerned it may break this, um, but you know, I I'm gonna see what happens. I think it's a decent swing from these levels. So uh, if I can get in kind of on the bid, I'll probably try to do that. We'll see what happens on this one. If there's any other ones, guys, that you know of, MJNA potentially could be a good swing trade now that it's kind of basing a little bit more down here. It looked like it was basing well here, but then it ended up breaking through that and uh, fading off a little bit more. So I'm not sure, maybe it's gonna do the same thing here. It's gonna you know, go sideways a little bit and then just end up breaking through those levels. But it seems like right now, 3.5 is kind of a key resistance area. So if it can break that, it might be a, a little bit interesting to the upside. So I'll keep an eye on that. RGBP guys, that's, that's actually was another one that uh, I wish I had swung kind of from this area because it really had some, some nice basing action here. And again, you can see this is the, the potential, you know, you get one big green day where it, it doubles because it's so far down from the peak there. So that's kind of what I wanted to, to show you guys on this one. Now, the stock that I, I am uh, just flabbergasted by, guys, absolutely flabbergasted by is LWLG. And the reason for that is, guys, this chart is so manipulated. And if you haven't tried to trade it from the short side, you probably haven't realized, or if you're new to the stock market, 
you probably haven't realized. If you think a stock does this just because it's a great stock, you know, there's a lot of people who are really bullish on this stock if you go on Twitter. Uh, if you think a stock does this just because it's a great stock, you're tripping, guys. You're tripping. I'm sorry. It did have a nice breakout from, you know, 2.2 cents. But every single time this stock has gone red in the morning, it just bounces back and rips to new highs. And it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Like the last, whatever, decent amount of days, it'll like dip it open and then just grind up all day long with no opportunity to get out. It's like these, these algorithms, bro. It's, it's crazy. Same thing here. You know, you, you, you're short into a morning panic. You're like, hell yeah, I'm making money on this. You know, it tanks from 10 bucks almost all the way down to 930. You're like, hell yeah, I'm going to hold because... This chart's already overextended, man. You know, this chart's this chart's overextended, man. This thing's gone up a lot. I'm gonna hold from from 9:30 short because this thing should go to this thing should go to seven. This thing should go to five. But it bounces right back and rips to new highs. And it did the same thing today. Bounces back and rips to new highs. So I actually lost money shorting this again today, which uh, I'm sure those people on Twitter are super happy about. But you know, it goes red on the day, and then it just bounces right back. And it just grinds up the rest of the day. So, like, you think you're going to have a dip to get out into, but you don't. Like, even right here, man, it looked kind of weak. It, it made a, a lower low a little bit, but no, couldn't do it. And I guess technically didn't break down below here and then never broke down below there when it rejected. So, ended up making another higher high. It's just crazy, man. It's, it's stock is, is so, so manipulated, so overblown. I'm hoping we get at least one more big green day out of this thing. It just stinks because I don't want to miss it on the short side. So it may go red in the morning. I may short it and then I may take another loss shorting it. Or I may short it in the morning and uh, I may cover, you know, 50 cents into a dip that ends up being a $5 dip, guys. Honestly, I have no idea what's going to happen on this stock. Because, I mean, if you short tomorrow, say it gaps up to, to 12.50 and then starts going red on the day. If you short it like 12.14, guys, this thing could easily have a red candle that goes down to six or seven. I mean, that's not out of the question. It's really not. I've seen these charts before. Like, it's not out of the question. So it would really stink to cover 50 cents in and then have it drop all the way down, which is kind of why it's tough because you want to lock in some gains when you know it's a manipulated POS that's going to bounce back probably and squeeze you. If you don't take your profits, it's going to turn into a big loss. So I don't know, man. I'm not sure what the move is on this stock. I'm just going to keep watching. It's probably going to be easier on the backside. You know, this is going to be one of those moves, hopefully, where it goes ridiculously high. And then after that, it just it just comes crashing back down. And maybe it's grindy and it's just a bunch of red days in a row, slow red days all the way back down to five, four, three. I have no idea how, how low this goes, guys. I really don't. But all I know is it is very overpriced at this current price, and I have made a little bit of money going along on it, but it's it's tough to get fills too, man. The, the fills are disgusting, very trash overall. So just not a big fan of this stock in general, but when I see a daily chart this overextended, I mean, I, I just, I have to short it. I have to. I've seen too many of these to know, uh, to, 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 to think that it's not gonna come down. You know, ETCG is a great example, guys. You know, you, you see a stock like this, it keeps going way longer than you think it will. You're like, damn, this thing's never going to come back down. And then it gets a, a huge red day. You know, it, it gets a massive red day. Like, look at that. That's not out of the question. Tries to bounce, and then it just ends up fading down. So, like, that, it's not out of the question for LWLG to have one red day that puts it at, you know, $8 or $7. I mean, realistically, I don't know. That's the thing. It's, it's just... <laughs> If they're gonna keep manipulating it, guys, then it could just be a slow grind down. But what I feel like may happen could be similar to, to ONPH, guys. So if you haven't seen this chart, you know, it, it grinds up. It feels like there's no end in sight. They just keep grinding it higher and higher and higher and higher and higher, like forever. And I mean, this chart is a really good example of that because, you know, this thing, you think it's, actually, I don't want that. Let's zoom in here. So you think this thing's overextended, right? And then it ends up going to, going to 50 which is why you can't just short and hold these things. But then in one day, they, they pull the rug and it just tanks, you know, 70% a day, 80% a day. So that could also happen. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen, guys. I don't know. When something gets that overextended and then they stop propping it up, it just has a massive, 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 massive panic. So uh, I'm not sure, guys. I'm really not sure what happens. This is also a very interesting chart. Wow, that actually died right at the end of the day. That's kind of crazy. 
I wish I'd been paying attention to that more. This is another super manipulated stock. But uh, that's kind of it for OTC land, guys. Those are the, the main tickers I've been watching. I guess MJWL is the last one. I got to call that out because they had a nice breakout here. I don't like this ticker, though. Pretty thinly traded, pretty horrible executions. I'm just not a fan. So that is that. We did have some nice runners today. MRIN, this is a multi-day runner. Close near those highs. Squeeze past the highs and after hours. And, uh, you know, if I pull up the last couple of days, you know, it's it's been pretty it's been pretty wild. Had a nice breakout here. Supposedly this is running... Uh, on some Google something also news uh, about like trusts or something like that. I, I'm not super super into catalysts for stocks like this, but you know it's a nice nice chart, uh, nice range, nice opportunity here. I was trading this one a little bit. Um, let's see, we also had what was the other one I was trading? Let me try to pull it up real quick on on uh, on Schwab for you guys. Um, uh, MRIN, I traded that. Oh, PRPH ran a little bit today. Just a little bit, had a nice little spike. Um, I guess I did forget one OTC, guys. IQST, two OTCs, Jesus. IQST was running all day, and this one, if you look at that chart, also did have some nice basing, so not a bad swing idea, you know, but it's, it is tough risking 10, 15% on a swing, so uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where the entry would be on this one, but. This thing ran up a lot and, uh, you know, starting to curl here. Nice big green day. So we'll see if it has any continuation. Um, and then the other one was HTZGQ, guys. This had a really nice run today, something about their bankruptcy plans. So after all those red days, had a huge, massive green day. Uh, closed right at those highs. I'm not sure if it, if it broke the high. I don't know. I'm not sure. It closed right there. Had a nice dip here. Unfortunately, guys, I dip bought this at like 804 and then I cut it 8025 because I didn't want to crack eight. And then I was like, this thing probably bounces, but I can't risk it. And uh, I think it, it was probably gonna bounce up to 817. I ended up not rebuying, not rebuying on this dip. And then I did not expect it to grind this high, guys. I mean, that's just an insane grind all day long. I mean, that's, that's crazy, that's crazy. So congrats to anyone who was long HTZGQ. May have a breakout over nine tomorrow, may gap up over that. And uh, yeah, that is it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't wanna make this too, too long of a video, so. Catch you on the flip side. Until then, let's grow better together. Preguntar, bebé, dime por qué te mientes. No puedes esconder todo lo que tú por mí sientes.